Mr. Creepycore here. Subscribe our channel for daily creepypasta stories. I nearly died when I worked in a fire tower. Now I guard windmills and I'm not sure if I'll survive the shift. I used to work as a park ranger in a fire tower. After that went horribly bad I got a job working in a warehouse. That also was a disaster. I just wish I would stop finding jobs that have strange rules. I don't go looking for terrifying supernatural happenings, they just seem to find me. The bad part is, I need a job if I want to keep living in my opulent, non-alley dweller begging for food lifestyle. I was looking through the job pages for anything. I was about to apply to a fast food restaurant when my eyes fell on an ad for a night watchman. I was about to pass it up, thinking about the injuries that were still healing after my last night watchman job when I noticed it was for a wind farm. I had to look up exactly what a wind farm was and found out it was where they had wind turbines that generated electricity. I saw there was a lot of controversy over environmentalists claiming that wind turbines were the worst thing to ever happen to wildlife. I always thought wind turbines were designed to replace dangerous nuclear power plants and polluting coal and oil ones. I guess you can't please some people. I called the number and was surprised to receive an answer from an actual person rather than an answering machine. The man asked if I could start today, not could I interview or fill out a bunch of paperwork if I could start. He didn't even know me. My spidey sense was telling me to beware. He told me the hourly wage and there was an immediate $500 signing bonus. Greed and need pushed their way to the front of my thoughts and I agreed to come to the job site. I told him I had some questions. He hesitated, but agreed. 25 minutes later, I turned down a gravel road past an open gate with a sign beside it that read, Larson Energy Limited. I pulled next to a building that reminded me of the warehouse where I worked for one day and was nearly killed. I shivered at the thought and hoped this job would turn out much better. I walked up to the door and was nearly run over by a short, round, balding man who appeared to be in his late forties. His hand was outstretched and shaking mine before the door was completely open. Are you the one I talked to on the phone? He said, smiling. I believe so. Good, he said. Come with me. I'll show you around. I followed him to a pickup truck and got in the passenger's side. He started it up and headed down a dirt road that was surrounded by trees that were in the general direction of the wind turbines. I stared at them in awe, having never been closer to one than a few miles away. Impressive, aren't they? He said, following my gaze. Very. Just wait until you get beside one. He drove slowly, not going over 20 miles per hour, but the road dictated the speed in general. It had some potholes that were large. I could imagine they would be mini lakes during a heavy rainstorm. I'm not sure my car would make it through here during bad weather, I said. Not to worry, he said. This is a company truck. This is what you'll be driving. And what exactly would my duties be? Exactly what we're doing now, he said, sweeping his arms toward the windshield. Doing rounds, making sure no one is messing with the turbines. I waited for the rest. For the strange rules. For the catch. That's it? That's it, he said. You'll do four rounds a night. You make sure no one is stealing anything or messing around with the turbines. Other than that, you just chase off trespassers. Do you have a lot of trespassers? He seemed to hesitate for a moment. Once in a while, some environmentalists will lurk around trying to take pictures of birds being hurt by the turbines. They even like to dress up as woodland creatures to scare people. What do I do if I catch one? Take their picture and forward it to the police. That's it? You won't be carrying a gun or anything if that's what you're asking. No, I meant shouldn't I inform you or security? You are security. I stopped and thought about it for a moment. Don't worry, he said. It doesn't happen often. Is there anything that does happen often? What do you mean? 
Are there any strange rules or anything weird that happens that I should know about? His eyes grew wider, but he tried to answer calmly. No, he said with a nervous chuckle. Of course not. My eyes bored into his searching for any lies. He looked away, pretending to pay attention to the road. It's very simple, he said. Do your rounds, make sure no one trespasses, and you'll be fine. You can even bring a portable DVD player if you want, or a book to read. Even use the company Wi-Fi to watch movies on your phone, as long as you do your rounds. No catch? No catch. We had just arrived back at the main building. He parked in front and led me inside to do paperwork and give me a check for the $500 bonus. Awesome, I said. When do I start? He looked at his watch. Right now. Really? He handed me the keys to the truck. Go get whatever you need out of your car and you can start your first round. I looked at my watch as I walked out the door. It was five till seven in the evening. I got my water bottle and lunchbox from my car, then headed toward the truck. Another similar pickup pulled into the spot beside me and a man got out. He was older than me, tall and thin, probably in his fifties. Are you the new guy? He said, walking over to me. I guess so, I said, shaking his hand. I do the daylight shift, he said. So did he tell you everything? I think so, I said as the manager came flying out through the doors. No time for chit-chat, he said, chuckling nervously. Time to make that first round. I looked from him to the other guard. I could tell there was concern on both of their faces, but they seemed to be different. The guard turned back towards his truck. Nice to meet you, he said, getting in his truck and busying himself with something. The manager breathed a sigh of relief and turned away. Oh, one last thing, he said. The office is locked after hours, so if you need any facilities... He turned and pointed to a porta potty sitting near the edge of the parking lot. Understood, I said. Who do I contact in case of emergency? He reached into his pocket and pulled out a business card, then handed it to me. Emergencies only, he said. Then he smiled and walked to his car, started it, and drove away. I got in the truck and started it up, nearly having a heart attack when the other guard knocked on the window. Here, he said, handing me a piece of paper. You can call or text if you have any trouble. Thanks, I said, taking the paper. He opened his mouth as if to say something else, then closed it and walked away. I watched as he drove to the gate, got out of his car, closed, and locked it. It didn't have the same feeling of finality as when I was locked in the horrible warehouse, but it was close. Nothing to be afraid of, I told myself. Just security measures. I kept telling myself that as I started down the dirt road toward the wind turbines. I drove slowly, wanting to make sure I kept an eye out for anyone. Even though the sun hadn't set yet, it was darker on the road as the trees blocked the sunlight. The road was barely a two-lane, but I didn't think I'd have to worry about any traffic jams out here. I rolled my window down and the scent of pine filled the truck. I leaned my arm out the window and took a deep breath. The last time I was in a forest like this was the warehouse job, but I didn't get to enjoy the trees. This was like gliding down a river that cut through the middle of a forest. I felt very relaxed. Too relaxed. I had to make sure I stayed awake and didn't drive into a ditch. The birds singing in the trees made me smile. This job turned out to be exactly what I needed. My shoulder twinged, reminding me of my injury, and I brought it back to my side. As I drove, the first turbine loomed ahead of me. It was massive. I leaned my head out of the window and craned my neck to see the top. The blades weren't moving for some reason. I would have to look that up on my phone when I got back to the parking lot. I stopped to avoid a deer that had wandered out in front of me. It looked at me as though I was intruding on its evening routine. I'm sorry, your majesty, I said to it, but if you would kindly move, I'll be on my way. 
It looked at me as if considering my proposition and then flicked its tail and trotted off into the woods. I smiled and continued on down the road. The second turbine came up quickly. It lost a little of the amazement of the first, but it was still an awesome sight. By the time I passed the third and fourth, I didn't even look up. I just glanced over at the door in the base of the tower to see if anyone was messing with it. The next turbine was missing. I saw a clearing just like all the others, but there was no tower and no turbine. I decided to take a closer look. I put the truck in park and shut it off. Out of habit, I took the keys with me. There was still enough daylight to see without a flashlight, but just barely. I walked up to where the tower should have been, but all that was there was the base. It was black, and there was debris around it. It was clear that much more debris had been taken away. I didn't see the amount of wreckage I would have expected for a 400-foot tower with a wind turbine on top coming crashing down. As I examined it closer, it seemed like there were a lot of burn marks and melting. I looked around the general area, and there were signs of scorching in the trees and on the ground. I wondered why the boss hadn't mentioned this. I've never heard of a wind turbine burning up before. I would have thought this would be something worth mentioning to a new security guard. As I was looking around, I heard something move in the trees. It startled me, because it would have had to be loud for me to hear it over the normal noises of the forest. But then I noticed the normal sounds of the forest were gone. It was eerily quiet. No birds, squirrels, or even insect sounds were audible. I was standing alone in the near dark, surrounded by trees and animals who weren't making any sound. It was like the forest was holding its breath to see what would happen next. My mind was a flurry of thoughts. Are the animals afraid of me? Is this one of those crazy environmentalists? Should I really be standing here, exposed, waiting for something to happen. My legs got the message and hightailed it back to the truck as quickly as I could. I rolled up the window, locked the doors and made a dust cloud from my tires as I left the area a little too quickly. When I got to the next turbine, my adrenaline had bled off and I was feeling silly for letting myself get scared like that. I slowed to my normal speed and finished my round. The parking lot was empty so I had my pick of spots. I decided to park close to the porta potty, just in case. I settled in and pulled out my phone. Normally, I'd go to YouTube and watch creepy pastas, but darkness had finally settled in for the night, and I didn't feel like scaring myself any more than I already had. There were a few security lights in the parking lot near the building and at the far corners, but once I started around, the only light I had was what I took with me. Maybe I could convince the boss to mount one of those strips of LED lights on the front of the truck. This would be one of the few legit reasons to have those. Every time I pass a car or truck on the highway with those lights blinding me, I have the strong urge to get a million candle power spotlight and shine it in their eyes. At least, that's what it feels like they're doing to me. I scrolled through Netflix looking for a show to watch. Creatures in the dark. Nope. Places you thought were safe. No way cryptids of Appalachia. Not even, what is Netflix trying to do to me? If I watch Black Mirror, will it go straight to an episode where a security guard gets horribly mangled in the forest? Comedies. I'll watch. The Office. It's not on Netflix. Of course. As soon as I want to watch something, it's gone. Sometimes I wish Blockbuster would have bought Netflix when they had the chance. I'll open up my Kindle and read a book. This one looks good. One on One by Michael Kelso. A crime fiction set in a prison. An hour into my book, the alarm on my phone goes off. Time for another round. Wow, that went fast. I set the phone aside and checked the glove compartment for a flashlight. Fortunately, one was there. It was one of those fancy ones that was very bright and had strobe flash mode on it. I wondered if I could borrow it to show some of those idiots with the bright LED lights mounted on the front of their trucks. I found myself more on guard this round. The noises of the forest had returned, thankfully. I opened my window a few inches, 
just enough to let some fresh air and the nightly noises in. The darkness seemed oppressive. After the first round being nearly daylight, this time the world was confined to the two beams of light fighting the overwhelming shadows of the menacing forest. I found myself going a little faster than last time. It wasn't really a conscious choice, just my subconscious asserting itself. Once again, when I got to the burned-out ruins of the wind turbine, the noises ceased. I went a little faster through that area. I thought I saw movement in the tree line heading toward me, but I refused to stop. I justified it by telling myself there was no working turbine here to vandalize. A little rattled, I finished my round quickly, nearly bumping my head on the ceiling of the truck a couple of times from bouncing down the dirt road much faster than I should have. When I came out of the forest, I welcomed the bright lights and relative safety of the parking lot. This time I parked at the end farthest away from the trees, under a security light, just for good measure. As I read my book, my eyes kept darting toward the trees as if I expected something to jump out at me. I continued to tell myself I was being foolish, but I also kept shooting glances at the trees. When my alarm went off for the next round, it took extra effort to make myself start the truck and aim the headlights toward the trees. The forest had gotten darker and more oppressive. It had also gotten quieter. There were still a few creatures making sounds, but not as many. I told myself most of them had gone to sleep. I only wished I'd believed it. Even the scent of pine had diminished. It had another scent to it now, the tinge of fear. My eyes darted from one side of the road to the other, taking in as much of my surroundings as possible, which wasn't much with the headlights barely able to cut a path through the suffocating darkness. I nearly jumped out of my skin when a deer walked in front of the truck. I slammed on the brakes making a dust cloud hover in front of me. The deer glanced at me then got spooked and ran off. I chuckled to myself at the little bit of revenge of the deer being scared of me. But my chuckle soon turned to chills. As the dust cleared, I saw something coming out of the trees. It was big, dark, and covered with fur. Sweat formed on my brow as my mind kicked into gear and my foot mashed the gas pedal. A cloud of dust flew from my rear tires as the truck galloped away. I glanced in my rearview mirror, and to my horror, the creature was running behind me. Even worse, it was gaining. I stepped on the gas making my speedometer jump and making me ride the seat like a bucking bronco. Thankfully, I had my seatbelt on, or I would have been knocked unconscious by the bigger bumps and ruts sending my head toward the ceiling. I refused to look back for a long time. When I did, the creature was gone. I breathed a sigh of relief and slowed a little. I was never so happy to see the parking lot. I parked in the same spot at the far end, under a light and thought back to my encounter, trying to make sense of it. The creature was huge. It was easily over seven feet tall and walked on two legs. No, it ran on two legs. It was going nearly 35 miles an hour chasing me. That was the other thing. Why was it chasing me? What did I do to annoy it? Or was it just looking for a midnight snack? Time to get some answers. I got the piece of paper the other guard had given me and typed in the number. Then I sent him a text. I checked my watch, and it was 2.30 in the morning. I didn't really expect an answer, but to my surprise, my phone dinged. I was expecting a message sooner, it said. Why? Let's just say I don't think the boss told you everything. Such as, you tell me why you messaged first. Okay, um, have you ever been chased by anything during a round? Define anything. Oh, I don't know, like a deer, a bear, a big hairy creature over seven feet tall, walking on its hind legs. Are you gonna quit if I tell you the truth? That depends on what the truth is. Nope, you have to promise not to quit before I tell you. Why? Because if you quit, I have to go back on night shift. And that's a bad thing? Promise you won't quit. I was having flashbacks to my last two jobs, 
being tricked into a horrible situation and then being told what was really going on. I can't promise. I've been burned in my last two jobs by strange rules. Strange rules? You don't want to know. Sounds like I do. Then you tell me what's going on here, and I'll tell you what happened in my last two jobs. If you promise you won't quit. I'll make you a deal. I'll tell you about my last two jobs, and then after that, you tell me if what's happening here is worse. Alright. I told him about my jobs as a park ranger in a fire tower and a warehouse guard. About the strange and supernatural things that happened, and how they damaged me mentally and physically. When I was done, he didn't answer right away. That was some story. Is it true? Those things happened to me. Wow, okay, what's happening here is you're being chased by Bigfoot. Alright, if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to lie. I'm not lying. Think about the way you described the creature to me. Seven feet tall, covered in hair, walking on hind legs. I thought about it for a long moment. Then why is he after me? He's not exactly. He's after whoever patrols the roads. But why? Go to a site called Reddit and read the story called I used to be a night watchman at a wind farm. What I saw there still haunts me. After you've read that, if you have more questions, text me. Okay. I went to the site and read the story. When I was done, I slowly lowered my phone, eyes wide. I texted. I'd read stories on Reddit before. I always thought they were made up. That's what I thought too. But if this thing burned up, how is it chasing me? It's not. I'm confused. I helped bury the thing. It's dead. What's chasing you is its mate, brother, cousin, who knows, but some creature with ties to that one and it's not happy. And let me guess, it only comes out at night. Yep. I quit. You SOB, you promised. So you'd rather have me die than quit. You won't die if you stay in the truck. How do you know? Because I've been the one doing night shift. I thought about it for a long moment. Okay, I've got one round left to go. If I make it without dying, we'll talk about my continued employment, and whatever we agree on, you have to back me with the boss. Deal. I started towards the forest. No time like the present if I'm going to die, right? As I pulled into the trees, it felt like a was passing through the gates at Jurassic Park. I hoped I would fare better than they did. The darkness was complete. Only the truck's headlights fought a losing battle enabling me to see it all. When I came near a turbine, I used the flashlight to illuminate the base of the tower and see if anyone was there. Once I was past the turbine, I quickly shut off the light. I had no desire to see anything else. I rolled the window down just enough to hear the nightly noises. When I got to the second turbine, they went silent. I clutched the wheel with white knuckles, waiting to see what would happen. I was so busy looking around for something in the woods, I almost ran into the huge boulder sitting in the middle of the road. That wasn't here before, was my first thought, followed quickly by, it's barricading the road so I can't speed away. The second thought jarred me into action. I turned the wheel hard and swerved around the rock. Fortunately, it hadn't rained in a few days and there wasn't any soft ground along the side of the road. I stepped on the gas as I rounded the boulder, just in time to see another boulder heading straight toward me. I swerved and floored it, feeling the impact of the rock as it hit the ground beside the truck, missing it by a mere foot. I fishtailed spewing dirt as the tires fought to gain traction. Once I straightened out, I got as much speed as I could, bumping around so much I worried about the suspension and the tires. Anything that stopped this truck would be the death of me. I felt pretty good about outrunning the creature when I saw something terrible in front of me. 
I slammed on the brakes and slid to a stop right in front of two boulders sitting in the middle of the road. They were spaced far enough apart that I couldn't just swerve around. I had to pick a side with more room and go slowly around, nearly scraping trees as I went. I had just made it around when something crashed into the back of the truck sending it flying forward. I looked back and the tailgate was crumpled. There was a boulder lying on the ground beside the other two that hadn't been there a minute ago. I jumped on the gas pedal as a boulder landed right in front of me. I wrenched the wheel to the right, feeling the metal scrape against the side of the truck, but I refused to take my foot off the gas. The scraping got louder. I knew this was it. He would catch up to me, and I would die a horrible death. And then, the scraping stopped and the truck lurched forward. I was free. I built up a little speed, and then started swerving back and forth in the road in case he tried to throw another boulder. I counted to twenty before letting off the gas. Sweat dripped from my forehead. I wiped my sweaty hands on my pants. My hands were stiff from holding the wheel so tightly. I kept my speed up not wanting to give him any chance to catch up to me as I bounced down the road. I turned a corner and slammed on the brakes. It was impossible. He was standing in the middle of the road in front of me. How could he have gotten here first? He stared at me and bared his teeth. For an instant, I thought about turning around, but I was almost to the end of my round, and going back meant guiding my truck back through a deadly obstacle course. With nothing left to do, I floored it and drove straight at him. If I was going to die, I was going to do my best to take him with me. He stood motionless as I gained speed. Just before I got there, he jumped. I watched as he landed behind the truck and turned on a dime to follow behind. I was gaining speed, but it wasn't enough. He grabbed my tailgate and pulled against. For a moment I felt the truck slow, but then the tailgate broke free and left him holding the figurative bag. He ran behind, throwing the tailgate at me. I ducked just in time as it smashed through the rear window and kept going through the front windshield. I peeked back only to see him chasing again. 